Namaskar and welcome. We all want to go deeper in meditation and everyone from beginners to advanced meditators faces the challenge of concentration and what to do with uh, so many thoughts that come into the mind. So um, my topic for this week is dealing with that. How can we what are some strategies, some effective strategies for um, dealing with so many distracting thoughts and achieving good concentration? So the theme is that thoughts are like graffiti. And if you have graffiti on the wall, uh, what you can do is just paint over it and get a nice clean surface again. And our mind is much like that. Um, and I find that's a useful image in meditation to think of my thoughts like graffiti and to use my mantra and the thought and the meaning of the mantra, only love everywhere or only God everywhere, um, as a, a paintbrush and just use that beautiful, positive, expansive, um, simple thought to just paint over those scattered bits of graffiti covering the surface of my mind. Um, so that's uh, one strategy. I find it very helpful. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when you're doing that, um, be sure to, well, another way to just give it as much depth as possible is to apply that painting, that action of painting in different directions. So begin with to go in a kind of inner spiral, spiraling inwards, and to have the thought that I'm going to cover every molecule of my inner world, go deep inside myself and cover every atom, everything, leave nothing untouched, use that paintbrush of love and oneness of the thought of God to use that paintbrush to cover every aspect of my inner world, all sorts of thoughts, ideas I might have about myself. And uh, once I've done that nicely, then to begin going in wider circles, the universe around me, um, and cover everything of the universe with that paintbrush of love and oneness. And, and then you've got the same paint inside and the same paint outside, which is, allows the inside and the outside to merge with each other. And then as each new thought arises, if a thought arises that, you, that uh, you're struggling to deal with, then treat that the same. This is also love um, and use that paintbrush and paint over that thought. So we become what we think about and we have surprisingly more control over our thoughts than we might imagine. And one, you know, as well as that we become what we think about, another characteristic, important characteristic of the mind is that the mind can't think of two things at the same time. So if you engage yourself with that rhythmic uh, painting of every aspect of your existence, and I forgot to mention past, present, and future. So you can go paint back in time, paint forwards in time, until you have everything of time and space covered. Um, <clears throat> then, you know, as long as you remain engaged with that thought, uh, the mind has no space and freedom to, to uh, come up with other thoughts that you might not wish, or more limiting thoughts, more disturbing thoughts. And if they do arise, simply paint over them as if they were graffiti. Um, there's a nice image, maybe more poetic than the graffiti, of thinking of thoughts as clouds moving across the sky. Um, <clears throat> so the sky is always pure and clean and beautiful, and the thoughts are just objects that move across it. So which do you identify with? Do you identify with thoughts or do you identify with the sky? The sky with its depth and unchanging beauty and 
and permanence and the clouds with their, which may all also be beautiful, but their temporary fleeting nature. So that's one strategy. Think of your thoughts as graffiti and just paint over them. Another strategy is to shrink the universe and everything that it contains, all your distractions, to imagine that universe shrinking down to a tiny point. Um, I started using this strategy after reading a discourse of my master's where he said that the universe is nothing but a point. And, and then just uh, imagining when I'm doing meditation or even when I'm not doing meditation, when I'm disturbed by something, bothered by something, or wanting to get some detachment and, you know, feeling too much wound up in the world. Um, I just imagine the whole universe reversing its process of expansion and coming back to that tiny point that it began. Um, <clears throat> and that's a very effective way of dealing with uh, distractions. Um, when the universe is gone, your body is gone, your mind is gone, everything is gone. Um, and it also helps you to come to a, a point which is really, really helpful in meditation. So there's a second strategy. Imagine, uh, you know, you're getting distracted by things, your mind is wandering off here and there, and you want to get some focus. So just imagine the whole universe, everything with it, your problems, your thoughts, the objects of your mind, everything collapses down into a single point. And the third strategy, and one that has come to me fairly recently, and I'm really enjoying using at the moment, is I use it in two ways. It's, it's imagining everything becoming transparent. So when a thought arises, imagine that object of your thinking slowly becoming transparent and disappearing. Um, so each new thought uh, that arises, uh, as you, you know, find yourself caught in it, then make it transparent. And as it uh, becomes transparent, then it stops blocking your vision of the infinite. Right? So that's what we're trying to focus on. We're trying to focus on the infinite and some thought comes up and blocks that. So imagine that thought gradually becoming transparent and disappearing, and then your um, clarity of vision is now again perfect. Right? Um, there's a good meditation where you imagine yourself as a bowl, like a fish bowl, full of water, and there's dust in the water, and slowly that dust settles down, and the water becomes completely clear and transparent and your mind is like that. So you can use this image of your thoughts becoming, or the objects of your mind, becoming slowly transparent and disappearing in the same way. So what's left when they become transparent is clarity and transparency. Everything is clear and transparent. So that's um, a very effective and also extremely enjoyable, and I'm using it a lot right at the moment. Um, but this approach has other an, another way that it can be used, and that is to um, use it as a practice in detaching yourself from your environment and from your body and moving inwards to your being, right? So we, we, when we are, our thoughts are engaged with our environment, that engagement holds us caught up there and, and makes us less able to feel our own being. Similarly, when we're engaged with our physical senses, we don't get you know, that engagement because the mind can't be busy in so many areas at once. That engagement with the senses um, keeps the mind away from being able to just sense its own being. Um, <clears throat> so 
use this idea of things becoming transparent as a means of detachment. So think of the vast universe around you. Imagine it slowly becoming transparent and disappearing. Think of your body which surrounds you. Maybe you're concentrating in, in a chakra. Um, think of the body which surrounds your chakra, the universe which surrounds your chakra as slowly becoming transparent and disappearing. And when it's gone, there's just your point of being, your chakra. And you can even imagine that becoming transparent until what is left is an unbroken ocean of transparency. So I find that one very effective and enjoyable. And as each new thought arises, um, make it transparent. And uh, all of these techniques evolve as you use them. And uh, what came to me just today, in fact, was that because I've been doing it fairly regularly, um, making everything around me transparent, uh, as I do that, it feels like it's a kind of fade in and fade out or a like when you're making a video, you transition between one seed and another and one scene, one scene and another. And as you transition, the, the scene gradually fades out and the new scene fades in. So when you practice this, imagining the universe around you becoming slowly transparent and everything transparent, your body, yourself, it's like that kind of transition in a video the world that you were looking at is a particular worldview. It's a way of looking at reality. And slowly, it just shifts and morphs and transitions into this clear transparency, which is another deeper way of looking at the same reality. You're looking at the essence, at the beingness, at the substance, the source of the universe, rather than its external manifestations and as you practice that uh, you know making everything transparent and disappearing it gives you this feeling that you have the ability to kind of shift from one worldview slowly and morph into the other back and forth and it's like you and uh, so that was just something that you know came to me in, in, in my meditation today because I've been using that practice for a while. And so that's the third major practice. Imagine your thoughts becoming transparent and disappearing, the world, your body, your chakra, and leaving only an unbroken ocean of transparency. And then finally, there's the time element. Um, I've said this on other occasions. Returning, um, not getting, you know, thoughts are going to come. Uh, that's inevitable. And so one shouldn't get worried about it. Uh, just have a very matter-of-fact approach to, okay, uh, return to my object, return to my chakra, return to my mantra. Keep coming back, keep coming back. Keep coming back and imagine yourself returning and returning and returning for millions of years. And if you do that, uh, you sense what amazing power you have in your hands to eventually succeed. You will sense if you keep just if you imagine that you keep returning to your chakra point or to your mantra again and again, and nothing will stop you for, and you'll just keep it up for as long as it takes, even if it's for eternity. And suddenly, you can be there and you can do it, because you are focusing on your capacity to do that over time, rather than your frustration 
with your inability to do it now. And what you focus on suddenly becomes, you know, uh, achievable. So that's another one. Bring in the time factor and add that dimension of eternal time. So just to, what would happen if I just kept returning and returning to this mantra, this beautiful thought of God and love for eternity? What could stop me? What could prevent me from self-realization? Nothing. So there you go, four methods that you can use to uh, help you deal with distractions. Don't try and do them all at once, uh, one at a time. And you can practice the different ones and choose one or the other according to your mood and or according to what you feel works best. So uh, they work for me. I find them enjoyable and effective, and I hope they can help you as well. Thank you for watching.